Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. We're not recording. Today we are joined by Kyle Cornelius King. Wait, I guess we don't know gum. What? Where'd you get gum? Uh, a place called Nunya and Mind Wax, on the not corner, yours incorporated. On the corner of Mind Ya. Come on, hurry up. Mind your own business. I'm busy. Okay, you have my list. Jamie, this is not gonna work. <laughs> Write it down on something. Are you ready? Your hand. Write it down on something. What? It's on I'm not gonna be tossing my phone back and forth. With you the whole time. Actually, I actually have my memory, so it's fine. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. Exactly. We are joined. Look, we're all together today. All we three. We did it. One, we're two, here. three. We're Kyle here. came to Canada. Yeah, I brought, brought, so I brought cool. my room with brought me. Brought his room. Yeah, he brought his room and all of his animals. We are here today to do a video all about our top brain burner game. What is brain burner games? I don't know. Whatever Explain you want it to mean. Explain it to the people, Kyle. I think it means games that give me AP, because I normally don't get AP. So What's AP, you know, Kyle? If you don't know, you can't afford Explain it. Explain it to me like I'm five. AP is analysis paralysis, which means when you're thinking so hard, you're paralyzed. Yeah, and your brain burns. Your and brain it is burned. Literally. It's gone. It's gone. Burns. So we each pick five games, and we're going to go beep, bop, boop, boop, beep, bop. Beep, bop, it's called a snake bop. draft. A snake. These aren't in any order, right? We're just, we just. Yeah. I hope not. No, they're not in any order, but we're each going to give you a list of five. Ain't that right? Jeff has my list. I don't. I deleted it. Uh, let's start with Kyle. Kyle, what's the first game? Kyle on your Cornelius list? King. Kyle Cornelius King. Uh, start us off. The first game is a game that was gifted to me from Jeff. What a guy. What eh? guy. Barrage. Barrage is a worker placement game, and it's very heavy economic. I think what's brain burning is that everybody can screw each other in this game mm -hmm. based on where you're putting stuff out on the map and it's not just the worker placement spot it's where you're putting these like dams so you're trying to steal water from people and so you don't want to screw that up when you, when you steal barrage water, or dune barrage get it barely because dunes about it's about spices. spice and water well, well water's <laughs> in the game continue that's all i got i haven't played barrage i don't think i would like it <laughs> i don't think you would like it either do you think i would like it i think you would like it why wouldn't you like it it's an economic and it lost well you me. like you irish like gauge. gauge it says little baby james this has baby water nah. baby dams baby, baby, dams. <laughs> baby dams yeah jeffrey what's your first pick all right i'm gonna pick this one because i know it's on kyle's list and i want to get to it first because then i can say he's copying me. my first game is gaia project did you put it on your list yeah it's a game that i know how to do the actions but i don't know how to do the actions well <laughs> i don't know how to optimize my score and i'm always struggling on like you know do i go the science route do i just keep putting up mines do i build satellites what do i want to do and i never do it right and every decision takes forever and i still get it wrong my first game is the best one so far that's been mentioned and that is calico because calico is cute and it hurts my brain you're just making a quilt for a cat cats are very fussy they're very picky they want what Summer. they want they want specific colors they want specific patterns etc and dams don't have that. No, yeah. dams be damned. Cats <laughs> are the best. I always want to go for every single objective in Calico, and it's near impossible to do that. So it just makes my brain melt every single time that I play it because I just want the perfect quilt for my cat. That's well, you could go for all of it, but you're gonna oh, do. Oh, I yeah, always bad. go for all of it. That's why it hurts my brain so bad. It's and just you'll like, typically it doesn't lose. work out. Yes. Don't you always just go for buttons? Me? Yeah. Always. Jeff yeah. loves buttons. I just. Go it's for like what my daughter does, just yeah. for colors. Just yeah. for colors. Yeah. She's five, and I win. <laughs> I don't think that She's you She's gonna win. do well in life. Another one to you, dummy. Oh, right. Okay, what else was on my list? It was memorized. Yeah, she memorized it is memorized. It. Okay, the second game on my list is Arkham for the card game. And this one I find melts my brain for a different reason because... I can never remember the rules. And so like, I'm constantly sitting there thinking about what's the right, what are the keywords here? What are the right things to do? This is like a living card game set in the Cthulhu Lovecraftian world. You know, you're playing different scenarios. You're trying to defeat different types of monsters and you never really know what the right thing to do is. And I basically live in the rule book when I play it. So it makes my brain hurt. Too much reading. The problem with Arkham Horror is I don't, I think you're pretty much gonna lose no matter what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even. Hello! Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared, scared. Are you looking for a quilt yes what kind of buttons do you want yes oh asmr cat, no. cat, on cat mic. asmr the next one up on my list is agricola Agricola. so you might be like what that's not really that brain burning which it technically isn't because there's so many limited off however my issue with agricola is i'm always trying to decide what's the best thing for me to do but also what screws over Hi. everyone else <laughs> primarily kyle and he never does it he never screws because we pretty much won. play this at two player against each other on bga it doesn't go well for me ever i think kyle 
Kyle has beat me 12 or 13 straight times, maybe more now. Probably 20. Yeah. How embarrassing. Um, it's the optimization of what I need to do, but also like what's best for me, but also screws over the person I'm playing against, I think. And I, I just struggle with some of those decisions. Mm -hmm. I might as well talk about Gaia Project, even though I said it when, in the pre-meeting. Jeff didn't uh, even have it, it on his list no. at that Bull point. Yeah, co-op. I did. <laughs> yeah, same things as Jeff said. One thing about Gaia Project, yeah, is I think I can make legal moves most of the time. My score has gotten worse all four times. I won the first time I played it because we were all new, and ever since it's just been downhill, and, and I might as well just stop playing it. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I played it on VGA, I got rushed. Absolutely crushed. I wasn't even like close. It's no fun. Oh, it's fun. It's, it's no fun. It's very good. It's fun. <laughs> there is a lot to decide. There's so much to consider. Yeah. There's so much to consider. Have and you played Terra Mystica? On the app. And there's so much to consider because like even your first two or three moves matter for your turns eight, nine, and ten. There's almost too much pre-planning for me. I think yeah. very tactically mm -hmm. instead of strategically in most yeah. games. I will pick another economic game. Woohoo! This is Brass. Which uh, one are you picking? Well, I prefer Lancashire. Hot take. There's less fiddly roles in Lancashire. Yeah, it's like more, it's tighter too. I think what makes brass crunchy to me is is the fiddly rules the, there's no doubt about that it's like constantly considering like oh can i do this all your actions like you have to discard a card and most of the time the card you discard doesn't matter but when it does you want to make sure you have that card in hand so each card is either like an industry or a city you can say like i'm doing this action so i have to discard a card but i may want the city card for later and that's where really where i just stop to think like i don't know what to discard because mm -hmm. four out of five times it doesn't matter but when it does you need to have the cards you need mm -hmm. so that's really what what trips me up in that game. Do you know why that game melts my brain? Because it all is one color. The entire board, black. That's the a fun color, though. black. It's not like it's tan. Ugh. Black and gray go great. I don't know. Hi. She goes on about this, but then she'll know. play like Cuba Libre and be like, this game's amazing. It so. is amazing. Speaking of which. Speaking of Cuba Libre. <laughs> <laughs> the next game up on my list is Cuba Libre. However, I'm just going to loop into all coin games because they all use the same system. The brain burn in a game like Cuba is the fact that there's only certain action selections that you can take. You're limited by those actions. Basically, in a coin game, if you take a selection, an action, the following player then has to follow suit with whatever's in that track. So not only are you deciding what you need to do, you're trying to pigeonhole your opponents. Yeah. In terms of area control and figuring out what the best action to take is alongside of the event card that's live, mm -hmm. it's just a lot to consider. And if you make bad moves in those types of games, it can be super punishing. The big thing with the coin games, with Cuba, because that's the only one we've played. We've only played Cuba. Is that so far, like yeah. you not only need to be mindful of what your goal is, you have to be mindful of what everybody's mm -hmm. goal is. So you have to watch like where is Rectorio on mm -hmm. the track, where is the government, and who. Who's working with who and mm -hmm. how close are they because everybody has different goals you have your own goal then you have cards coming out that are also giving you more options more events then you stuff, have yeah. to think about strategy it's like, and it's, it, just it's like, like playing root and being mindful of everything going on in root but amplified by two or three just with yeah. event cards and stuff that are coming out I could interchange this one with another one but I'm gonna say fleet the dice game which could be interchanged with three sisters they are designed by the same people and and all that good stuff but these are are crunchier roll and write where everything combos off of everything else so you're constantly like oh, okay I'll cross this off but then this triggers and then if this triggers this triggers so you're constantly trying to make cascading decisions and it's just it's a lot it's a pretty I haven't tried Hadrian's Wall but I don't know have you mm -hmm. I've heard that that one is like a really heavy roll and write and I, I don't know that I would like it because I think Three Sisters and Fleet the Dice Game are about as crunchy of a roll and write I agree. that I want yeah I agree yeah and I just played Fleet for the first time and I loved it mm -hmm. but yeah that's like a roll and write that's right up my alley which I don't really like roll and writes too much but that one like yeah. gave me the feel of like it is a game yeah you are playing yeah. a game there's mm -hmm. a lot of strategy in it but there's also randomness and luck based on like what gets rolled and specifically in fleet where you're like picking different dice so you have to think about like what am I being left with and you know that whole thing so I just find that game in particular is kind of like meh Okay, so my next one is going to be Deception Murder in Hong Kong. So you'll notice like not a lot of my games are super heavy games. You do, you but do. But this is like a party style deception, social deduction yep. game. And basically the reason why I find this one to be really brain birdy is because like each person only gets 30 seconds to give reasoning on who they think the killer is. So you're looking for a killer, you're looking for their weapon and how they did it. Wait, right. uh, weapon uh, and like location. Or what's 
left at the scene of the crime. Yeah, yeah what's left at the scene of the crime. You don't know who the murderer is because one person is secretly the murderer and you only get 30 seconds to say. And then when somebody else is giving the 30 seconds, if you want to say something else, you can't. So you're also trying to absorb like all of the information that you're getting, but the murderer could be giving you different information, trying to deflect from who they are. And it's just like trying, I find social deduction games to be extremely brain melty. I had a hard time picking which one I wanted to go with because I find them all like you just sit there and you're constantly second guessing yourself and you're constantly second guessing everybody that's around you. I find those types of games for me are the kinds of games that literally just make me sit there like I just don't know mm -hmm. and I, I hate not knowing Especially, but I love the game. Yeah deception with deception it's like you have to articulate stuff in 30 seconds that's it and the information that you're provided yes. is very vague yes. so you're trying to articulate something like feelings and whatever in 30 seconds and it's just. And brain burning for the person who's the investigator as well who is that what the person is called? The forensic scientist. The forensic scientist because you're given these random mm. cards and you're trying mm. to give everybody good clues with what you've been given so it might not even make sense so that can cause some analysis paralysis which we mm -hmm. saw when Max was playing because he's like I just I, I don't know. I found that game. Yeah for a social deduction yeah. game. Yeah. For definitely. Super fun though. All right next up on my list is a fun little game called Furnace. Yeah. Furnace is a pure I shouldn't say it's a pure engine builder. No, I think it is. It's a pure engine builder with a very surface level auction mechanic, I guess, or bidding mechanic or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. I don't think the brain burn comes necessarily from the bidding. It more so comes from just making sure you're maximizing your engine in front of you because you will build out tons of cards in front of you and all of those cards will allow you to manipulate resources and build certain things in order to get even more resources or victory points or coin. And there's just so much going on in front of you that it's hard to keep track of what you've done or what you're trying to do because again you have to start planning early and pretty much picking a resource that you're like i'm gonna focus on one or two things and that's it there's just a lot going on and it's hard to keep track now mm -hmm. kyle had mentioned actually playing it in a certain way which was yeah. to play once you grab a card to add to your engine actually keeping them in order which mm -hmm. can help with the analysis paralysis that can happen then the ap comes from the bidding yeah yeah i think it, yeah that's what i saw anyway because mm -hmm. you're like you are truly thinking like I need this resource mm. I do not want to win this card right how many can I get away with yeah, so I'll right. put my two down it's yeah it's definitely one that I'm constantly like oh, I've I, seen, I don't know if I'm doing this at the right time I've seen some pretty severe analysis paralysis in that game yeah so. yeah it's the yeah. cascading thing I think anything that has like cascading effect mm -hmm. gives you major analysis paralysis because yeah. you just want to make sure the timing is right on mm -hmm. everything yeah first one I will talk about then is Paladins of the West Kingdom which is actually my favorite Garfield game I think most of them are good mm -hmm. I think Paladins is great. Um, and I think one of the reasons it is brain burning, it requires so much forethought. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm not very strategic. You cannot be in Paladins. You have to think about like, I'm drafting these set of workers so I can do these actions. And there are so many times where I'm just like, do I do, do I put this guy here now? Or do I save it for the next round when mm -hmm. I can do more? When do you stop building your engine? Because you, uh, there was an action where you can like put houses to make your action on the right side of your board cheaper. When do I stop doing that so I can start getting points? Yep. And that really like gets me because that game can go quick. Like, like you will run out of time. And I, I that's a game I've just seen a ton of analysis paralysis. It's not just for me, but like everybody around the table because they're just constantly thinking, you don't want to screw that up because you right. get to, such limited workers. Yeah, that's a, that's a game that we just experienced with Alien Tyler at Dice Tower and I would agree completely. Yeah. Our first experiences of that game, I was like, what? What is this? It's just big table presence, lots of actions to take. There's so much you can do in terms of optimizing. Yeah, like you just said, because you're drafting the color, different color meeples that do different specific yeah. things. And you're like, well, what if I get stuck with that one? And then you end up getting stuck with that one. And you're like, how do I stretch these as far as they can possibly mm -hmm. go? And for my last one, I'm actually going with like a pretty simple game in terms of like heaviness rule wise. And that's Cryptid. And Cryptid is a straight up deduction game. There's a map. And on this map, there's one hex that contains a Cryptid monster. It doesn't matter if it's any monster. Every person is given one clue to where that monster is. It could say like, like, uh, the monster is either in a forest or a desert or monster is within two spots of a green structure that's all you're given and so on your turn you're either you're taking like a, a cube and saying like asking like jeff is the monster here and he will either say yes or no and every time you're just going around and all these no's and yeses will point you to what the other people's clues are not to brag i'm pretty good at cryptid he's been bragging the whole time but I, 
about. <laughs> the reason I'm good at cryptid is because I'm not set on a timer. So I'm get, I give myself enough time mm -hmm. to like right. clue out like, okay, it can't be that because that's there. And like, I'm sure it's very annoying to play that game with me because I take a long time. And if I was set on a timer, I would not be as good because mm -hmm. it's all just like deducing what you see on the map. Kyle's been talking this whole week about how good at cryptid He calls he himself King Cryptid. Yeah, King Cryptid. That's his uh, MSN name. Yeah, King is MSN and his ICQ at King Cryptid. Uh, they keep asking to play and I refuse though. Doesn't want to hurt our feelings. Either. Well, I don't want you to like beat me and then the right. legend is gone. I got gotcha. you. Last up for me is, I think one that might surprise some people, I don't even know if you guys agree on this one, but it's Dune Imperium. I have AP from most like worker placement action selection games. I just, I always struggle with those types of games and Dune Imperium, adding in the deck building, just like an Arnak, it's just introducing another mechanic in a mechanic that already causes me AP in general. And Dune Imperium, I think is such a tight game with everyone around the board that every time I make a decision, I feel like it's a winner lose situation like mm -hmm. if i make this wrong call i'm not gonna win or if you don't get there fast enough right and like you know i do think the optimized actions in that game are limited there are a bunch of things you can do but depending on what you've built into your deck there's maybe one or two spaces that you're focusing on and if those get taken it's not so easy to pivot in my opinion in that game okay. i just feel like every selection i make in that game matters from start to finish and it's just one that i constantly like if you even think about the com you even talk about the combat well yeah like, like every round there's a combat it's like do you even want to be in this so battle? i don't need yeah like i normally don't bother with the combat but that's the only way to get points i disagree <laughs> yes there is an added layer of like am i going to push my cubes in and get involved in this fight or not all in baby yeah that's normally why i don't get involved because jamie is just so chaotic <laughs> that she'll just go in all the time and it's I'm like holy neutral, but yeah there's wondering. just so many little things in that game and like where am i going to focus what track am i going to focus on in terms of like the different factions it's just a lot and it always causes me to melt the brain a little that bit that one does not cause cause me ap because i just <laughs> I just, you're not good at it. I, I don't remember my last game. Oh man, she but almost I'm also made it. considering uh, changing it. What's your list? My last game, the last game on my list is going to be Role Player. And the reason I picked this one is because I think of all of the ones on the list, this one probably melts my brain the most. When Jeff and I started playing Role Player, I'm like, oh, this looks like a fun little dice game. But every section of the board where you're playing a dice, so this is like a dice placement, dice manipulation, kind of like build building your adventurer, building yeah, your character, role what player. I would characterize it as. It's a lot of things, but yeah. essentially you're drafting dice to yeah. put into one of their characteristics, and each class has different types of dice, both color and number total that they need in certain spots based on those characteristics. So like if you're, I, I'm just going to pick a random one, like an orc or something, a warrior, and you need like 15 strength, then you need to be drafting all of the high dice, but then like it's triggering off of other things. You need to make sure that you're getting the right color mm -hmm. in order to score extra points for your objectives and then you're also taking cards that are going to be manipulating those dice and then you have to think about what does the other person need because I can see that Jeff needs like yellow dice here so I'm going to take the yellow dice and then I'm looking at my board I'm like I don't even need these yellow dice now I need to deal with this and it's just like there is so much going on in this game and what like can look to be <clears throat> it looks like it could it looks like Sagrada like it looks mm -hmm. like it yeah. could be a relatively like simple game not to say that Sagrada is simple because that is also a look can be brain birdie too but like this one I just found like the first time that we played it I think at the end we were both like we were looking for a light game to play and we were sitting there like this and we were both like, I don't even know. I don't know how I did. Like, there's I have there's no also idea. the added element of like the market, like exactly. blocking people off from like the arm, the suits of armor. Yeah. And, like, and that each well, characteristic yeah. lets you manipulate a die. Yeah. So like, yeah. you place it in that, it's like, exactly. oh, now I can flip a die. Yeah. And if Jeff is a certain thing and there's armor out that gives him added strength or added bonuses, then, but it doesn't help me at all, but I still don't want him to have it. So now I'm taking these mm -hmm. cards of anyways. There's I just, just so many decisions. The, it's to make. crazy so actually. How, like how much there is of that game yeah, yeah. you don't really think of that as like a yeah. very heavy game no Man. but no. when you're There's playing a... it you're just like every yeah. decision feels like yeah, it is like the most important decision. you have to hit the characteristic level like whether it's 15 plus yeah you then have like kyle mentioned the bonus once it's completed that lets or once you place that lets you do things every mm -hmm. action has like multiple layers of consequence yeah i don't then know you're the just cascading hoping result to see, like can i get something okay i'll put this dice here but can i'm hoping to get 
part of this. That's going to be able to manipulate that dice later. So you place a dice hoping that you can change it later. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a great one. And then the the game that I was going to say instead of that one. You don't get it on. I know, but I just want to, even if we're just talking amongst us girls, (laughs) was mind management when you're not the person hiding. Yeah. (laughs) If you're playing that with like someone else, I think it has a lot of. Anyway. A lot of dialogue back and forth for sure. Yeah. Well, because you make one wrong move and you're literally like, I don't know. Especially early. If you was making an assumption early, you're Which I always do. I always in make dire straits. assumptions. Those are 15 of our top brain burny oh. board games. And Moana. Moana! Hi. What are you doing in here? I am Moana of Motanui. She just wants to be pet. You will board my boat. That is all that we have for you guys today. We would love to know down below what some of your favorite brain burny games, your top brain burny AP games are. We would love to know. I bet you 18XX. Yeah. TI. Yeah, Eclipse is one Eclipse. I thought about. Food Chain Magnate was one I considered. Sushi Go. Uh... Well, yeah, when do you take that pudding? Now, if you're interested in buying board games, like any of the many that we mentioned today, we have two options for you. Whoops. I was like, is that full or empty? <laughs> we have a few different options for you, but you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. For us in Halifax, that is the Boardroom Game Cafe located on Barrington Street. But here in Columbus, where do they go? The Guard Tower on Treview. On Treview. We literally just went we there. Literally and just we went there and bought games. Bought games because um, we That's can't we go do. into a store without buying games. Apparently. And what did you have to do when you bought the games? We had to go to Target yeah. to buy another bag. To buy another bag to get back <laughs> to Canada. <laughs> Because we have too much stuff now. It is what it is. You'll see that in the We were coming here and buying no games, and I think we're going home with five or six. Maybe seven. Oh, boy. That is all that we have for you guys today. If you like what you see, please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon, and now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later days. So long. Bye. Farewell. Cat. What are you doing? Being a superstar. Moana is the star of the show. Superstar. I am Moana. Are you the superstar? Ooh, it's ready? Yep. Ready? I'm ready. What do we need Kyle to do? I'll say and. Yeah. Okay. Ready? What do you want to say? Is this okay? Yeah, I don't care what you do. That's not true. Okay, go. Oh, Hello, everyone, oh, and welcome Jack. back to Foster the Meeple. And. Board games. Mm-hmm. A channel all about. Board games. And. and. Oh. <laughs> okay, we'll do that she again. Has her Womp. Hello, everyone, and welcome Wait. back to. What? You're on my left. It's weird. I know. Deal with it. Ugh. You don't want to kick out the cat? No. Never. All right. For the entirety of the game. No, <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> what are you playing? Oh, a wow. poof. Look at them. They're like, oh, sh- yeah. A poof. Yes. I'm obsessed with this cat. Are we best friends? I'm chilling. Moana. You're chilling. Uh, blanking on the uh... cards. The deck building. Thank you. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm struggling. Right now. Having AP right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, is this brain burning? I um, think we melted his brain. <laughs> Moana, what are your options?